Hi everyone, Miss Tui here. Ozobot needs your help to get through a maze by running a program that includes sequences, loops, and conditionals. For today's lesson, you will need an Ozobot fully charged and calibrated. The Ozobot editor today will be working in level three. A pencil, plain paper, and three objects to create walls. You can use extra paper, but I will be using index cards. In today's lesson, you will create a maze with obstacles for your bot to complete by following a set sequence. Program your bot with Ozobockley to successfully get through the maze using sequences, loops, and conditionals, and identify different sequences, loops, and conditionals in your maze and in your program. To prepare for your first skills check, Let's review the concepts, sequences, loops, and conditionals as they apply to computer science. A sequence is an ordered set of instructions. Here's an example. The sequence of this program tells Ozobot to move forward two steps, spin left, display a yellow colored LED, and play a happy sound. A loop repeats a sequence of instructions. Here's the same code with a loop block. The sequence would repeat two times. A conditional performs different outcomes or actions depending on whether a certain condition is true or false. Here's the same code now with a conditional. The program will only run if or when an object is sent in the front of the bot. Let's get started. Let's get started by creating a maze for Ozobot to get through. You need a blank piece of paper, a pencil, and three objects to use as walls. I've cut and folded an index card from my walls, but you can use regular paper or other objects. I'll be using black marker, but you will be using a pencil. The maze will have a pathway made up of two lines wide enough for the bot to fit, a start, two right turns, one left turn, and a finish. Mark the start of your maze by drawing a rectangle in the bottom left corner of your paper. Then label the rectangle start. From the left side of the start rectangle, draw a vertical line almost to the top of your page. Turn the corner and draw a horizontal line to the middle of the page. Next, draw a line down vertically to the middle of the page, then to the right horizontally, almost to the right edge of the page. This is one side of your maze. For the other side of the maze, start on the right side of the start rectangle and draw a vertical line to the middle of the page, then turn right, and draw a short horizontal line. The next line will be drawn down vertically almost to the edge of the page and the final line to finish the maze goes horizontally to the right. Draw in a rectangle connecting your lines and label it finish. To complete your maze, add and label rectangles to show where the object or walls will be. The first object will be placed opposite the start, so draw a rectangle at the top left of your maze outside the lines and label it object 1. The second object will be in the middle of the maze. Make a rectangle outside the pathway and label it object 2. The third object will be at the bottom of the maze. Draw a rectangle outside the pathway and label it object three. How does your maze look? You should have a maze that has a marked start, a marked finish, and three places for objects. Your maze should also have two right turns and one left turn. Now that your maze is complete, think about how the bot is going to move through it. You will plan out the sequence of a program using pseudocode. 
Pseudocode is a written description of the steps in a computer program using normal language. You will need another piece of paper and a pencil to write down the sequence your bot needs to follow. Look at your map. What is the first direction your bot is going to move? Write move forward to remember this will be the first step in the sequence. Next, the bot is going to come to a wall. What should the bot do so that it does not run into the wall? The bot should turn right. This is an example of a conditional. Right if object in front, then turn right. After the bot avoids the wall by turning right, what will it do? The bot will move forward again. Right move forward to remember this will be the third step in the sequence. The bot is going to come to another wall, so there is another conditional. Right if object in front of, then turn right. Do you see a loop or a set of steps that repeats? The bot is going to move forward, and if it senses an object, it will turn right two times. Circle the first two steps and write loop. You can also cross off the other two steps since they will be completed by the loop. What will the bot need to do now? The bot will move forward. Write move forward. Next, the bot will come to another wall, so there will be another conditional. This time, if the bot senses an object in front of it, it will turn left. Right if object in front, then turn left. Finally, the bot will move forward until it crosses the finish. Right move forward. Look at your pseudocode. How many steps are in your sequence? How many loops will you use in your program? How many conditionals will you use in your program? After you have your pseudocode written, you are ready to build your program in Ozo Blockly. You will create your program in smaller parts so that you can test and iterate or make changes focusing on only a few coding blocks instead of all of them at once. To begin, program your bot to move to the second object in the maze. Look at the pseudocode you wrote. The first block you need is move forward. Go to level 3 in OzoBlockly and find the movement category. Click a move forward distance one step medium block and drag it into your workspace. Next, look back at the pseudocode you wrote. The bot needs to turn right if the object is in front of it. Find the sensors category. Click if an object in front do block and drag it into your workspace below the move block. To complete the conditional, go back to the movement category. Click the rotate slight left block and drag it into the conditional block. Use the drop down arrow to change the block to rotate right. Finally, the bot will repeat this sequence two times. Go to the loops category. Click on the repeat two times do block and drag it around the other two blocks. Now it is time to test the program and iterate or make changes to figure out how many steps your bot needs to move. My bot needs to move seven steps. How many steps does your bot need to move forward? Change the number of steps in the move forward block. Then run the program. Iterate or make changes to find out how many steps forward your bot needs to move to sense the first object without running into it. Next, you will add code to program your bot to move to the third object in the maze. Look back at the pseudocode you wrote. The next block you need is move forward. Go back to the movement category. 
click a move forward distance one step medium block and drag it below the loop block. This time, the bot needs to turn left if the object is in front of it. Find the sensors category. Click an if object in front do block and drag it below the move block. To complete the conditional, go back to the movement category. Click the rotate slight left block and drag it into the conditional block. Use the drop down arrow to change the block to rotate left. Now it is time to test the program and iterate or make changes to figure out how many steps forward your bot needs to move to get to the third object. My bot needs to move forward four steps. How many steps does your bot need to move forward? Change the number of steps in the second move forward block. Then click Run Program to test. Iterate or make changes to find out how many steps forward your bot needs to move to sense the third object without running into it. Finally, you will add code to program your bot to move to the finish and celebrate. The bot needs to move forward one more time. Go back to the movement category. Click a move forward distance one step speed medium block and drag it below the if do block. Then choose a block from the sounds and the light effect categories. My bot will play happy and then mimic fireworks using its LED lights. What cool effects will your bot celebrate with? Now it's time to test the program and iterate or make changes to figure out how many steps your bot needs to move to get to the finish line. If your bot needs to move more than 10 steps, you can use a loop or repeat block around the move forward block. For example, if your bot needs to move 12 steps, you could put six steps in the move forward block and then put a repeat two times around it. My bot needs to move forward 10 steps. How many steps does your bot need to move forward? Change the number of steps in the third move forward block. Then test the program. Iterate or make changes to find out how many steps forward your bot needs to move to get to the finish line. Great job combining sequences, loops, and conditionals. Let's check your work. Does the maze look like the example? Is the sequence the bot will follow written out on paper? Is a program built to move the bot through the maze using a sequence, a loop, and two conditionals? Does the program move the bot through the maze successfully? If you're looking for more to do and you're ready for a challenge, create your own maze and program your bot to move through it. Your program must follow a set sequence, include a loop, and include a conditional. Remember to make a plan or pseudocode to help you with coding the correct sequence for your program. Come back again soon for our next lesson.